my doctor said, look, you know, this is cancer. You know, it, it's going to be a long ride. It's going to be hard. It's going to be arduous. You know, you have to strap in. I said, well, it's messing with a marathoner. This, this is my jam. This is what I do. You know, the way I've, I've been putting it is, you know, I'm, I'm trying to outrun cancer. At some point, you know, it's eventually going to bow out and let me keep running. Cancer's picked the wrong person to mess with. I'm basically taking every day as a challenge from cancer, saying, look, cancer doesn't think I can outrun it. Well, I guess we'll see about that. Hepatologist says this tells me that it's cancer. This is cancer, but we'll go ahead and do some more tests, uh, take a closer look. So he scheduled me in for a CT scan, and CT scan that was a very uncomfortable test, um, and that's when I knew that this is probably getting down the serious track. So no more of the whole. Oh, I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure it's nothing. Now we had to deal with the fact that it might be something. So from there, we uh, met with not only my hepatologist, uh, we also now met with a, um, a liver surgeon. And they shared with me the news that you have liver cancer. And here comes Kaboli, the 2016 champion, is gonna win the 2018 Skechers Performance Los Angeles Marathon. So I just run the LA Marathon. Cancer was the very last thing on my mind. I was actually looking at trying to qualify for the Boston Marathon. Now all of a sudden I just kind of had to put everything on stop just to deal with the fact that I had cancer. Not that I might have cancer, that I do have cancer. You know, my family means everything to me, so I never, you can never prepare yourself for having that conversation with your parents that, mom, dad, I have cancer. Telling my sister and my brother that I have cancer, my wife's family that I have, that's just not something that you can just, you know, look up on the internet to, you know, to uh, get a step-by-step -step instructions. When he first gave us the news, and us meaning me and my brother Mike, um, the first emotion that came to my mind was absolute, of course, disbelief, but absolute anger, because it, this just couldn't happen. This is absolutely unfair. It's this, he's the head of our our little unit. Because he is such a positive person, you know, he, his attitude is, um, why think about why think of um, the negative? Always think about the positive because we don't know what the outcomes are going to be. Just you know, focus of what we can control. And if we can't control it, just you know, stay positive. She's my soundboard. I mean, it, it, and sometimes you know, she's a soundboard for some not so nice things that I'm going through. Right. So uh, not every day is a day of positivity. I, I, I go through some pretty dark days also and she's the one that sees it, you know, front and center uh, more than anybody else. And I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect at all. And uh, I, but I have the perfect support around me to deal with my imperfections because, damn, I really need it right now. Everybody's here, you know, to any uh, help that we can offer, you know, we are here. So uh, emotional and yet we are very resolute and uh, determined. Honestly, my, <laughs> my physicians wouldn't allow me the time, the benefit of time to 
deal with it and process it because they said, look, we need to address this immediately. We need to schedule you for surgery. The surgery is actually your only option. So what we need to do is we need to uh, have you come in and remove the tumor from your liver as soon as possible. So then we had the surgery about four weeks uh, after the diagnosis and uh, I, I recovered well. In fact, you know, my surgeon and my hepatologist said that I was the dream patient because I came in with the level of fitness to be able to handle the surgery and recover from the surgery much quicker than your normal, I don't want to say normal, but your, your standard, you know, cancer patient. I was only hospitalized for four days and then I was back at work uh, about a month later so and then off running. <laughs> I started running again about six weeks after that. Everything was going really well and everything came out uh, clean so I got a clean bill of health and they proclaimed me you know based on that resection to be cancer free that they got all of it it's all gone so I literally ran with that literally ran with that because um, I was ready to run a marathon or start training to run a marathon it's an emotional release for him to run you know how sometimes people eat um, he'll run but the fact that I could now run without cancer just gave me the surge of energy to really kind of go for it. And by go for it, I mean trying to qualify for the Boston Marathon. As you're running, you talk about everything and anything, and you talk about some real personal things. You talk about blisters on your toes and, and getting chafing where places where you, you know, wouldn't tell anybody else. Um, but then you have the time after running for half an hour, an hour, two, three hours, you can talk about just about everything and you just let it get out of your head, out of your mouth, into the other person's ear. They digest it, bring it back to you, and again, it's, it's again, very therapeutic. Anytime I see an obstacle or I see something where in the past I would have looked at it as an excuse to just kind of, you know, throw it in and, you know, just try and finish, I accepted that now as a challenge from you, Cancer, to, to you know, give up, but that's not going to happen now. And to talk to him through, you know, how this started impacting his life, you know, going through, having to start running again, but I was amazed at how quick he came back. So in October, I ran um, uh, a race in Big Bear, and I <laughs> ran the race of my life, I, uh, so much that I actually qualified for the Boston Marathon. And because I had this new lease on life, I, it really simplified things for me. Um, I was able to sort out, you know, what was really important to me and basically eliminate what wasn't important to me. He's very determined now. Um, I think determined not just in his running and he has goals and his running's gotten so much stronger in the last uh, six months a year since he was diagnosed but that he sees it as his purpose and you're know, trying to get everything out of life and pushing himself because he knows life I think is, in, is finite and he wants to get what he can get out of it and then see how he can affect and impact other people. I was literally on top of the world. Um, I just could not feel better. Everything was just going great. And then less than a month later, uh, I had to go in for another blood test and another uh, scan. Some unusual uh, results came back. Um, so my uh, hepatologist called me back in and said, we suspect that your cancer may have come back. 